today I'd like to tell you what are the two most reliable car engines in the world and why they work. But to start, let me tell you about some of my favorite engines and why they're so brilliant. This is a Solex two-stroke engine. It has just two moving parts, a piston and a crank directly connected to its generator. Perfectly simple. And another engine which saved my bacon is a Lycoming aircraft engine in a Cessna. The cylinder had cracked almost all the way around in this four-cylinder horizontally opposed aircraft engine. As the piston moved up and down, the cylinder cracked open and closed, open and closed, pushing out quite a lot of oil. I flew it like that for over a year. It was only the brilliant intervention of a mechanic friend who covered my engine with soap and we ran it and saw where the crack was and got the cylinder changed for a second hand one and when we examined the original there was a design flaw. There was a stress rising crack in the casting which had spread in a horseshoe shape almost round the entire cylinder but wow amazingly strong engines whose only aim in life is to get you home but today I'm going to tell you about the two best vehicle engines ever made So what car engines are nearly indestructible? I'd like to thank Michael K for his wonderful insight on the Cora platform. Here are two examples of nearly indestructible engines. The first I will note is the Land Rover Series 2A four-cylinder gasoline engine. The Land Rover Series 2A gasoline engine was a four-cylinder inline overhead valve chain-driven cam pushrod petrol engine displacing 2,286 cubic centimeters or 140 cubic inches. The engine was over square with a 90.47 millimeter bore and an 88 millimeter stroke. The crankshaft turned in five main bearings. Its compression was seven or eight to one. But why is the 2.5 liter gas engine in the Land Rover so durable? Well, to understand that, you have to look at another Land Rover engine, their 2.5 diesel. This engine had a bore of 90 millimeters and a stroke of 88, a displacement and bore and stroke almost identical to the 2A gasoline engine. A bit of a strange coincidence, no. But the diesel engine, being a compression ignition, had a compression ratio of 23 to one. That's three times the compression of the petrol engine. All that is the reason for the Land Rover 2.5 petrol engine's indestructibility. For the petrol engine was built on the same machine line as the diesel and shared much of its architecture, features, and dimensions but was significantly understressed compared to the diesel variant. The low compression allowed the petrol engine to run without pre-ignition on marginal gasoline that was available in some of the colonial backwaters where the Land Rover was sold. And the excessively robust design tolerated complete abuse. In an advertising British Leyland, which built the Land Rover at the time, noted that one Land Rover in some backwater where normal lubricants were not available actually was driven 700 miles using bananas as a lubricant. I have visions of driving a Land Rover across the Punjab, surrounded by clouds of warm banana fumes wafting from the crankcase.
And the second engine, which was almost indestructible, was fitted in the legendary Citroen 2CV. The Citroen 2CV engine was a two-cylinder opposed air-cooled twin offering a displacement from 375 to 602 cubic centimeters and producing between 9 to 29 horsepower. It powered this quirky bit of French automotive elegance. This is a Citroen 2CV Sahara variant, which had, and I'm not kidding you, two independent but simultaneously controlled two-cylinder engines and transmissions. A twin or a four. It was a bi-twin. It was fantastic. The Citroen 2CV air-cooled flat twin was legendary. But why? Well, the 2CV twin was designed from the crankcase up for durability and minimal maintenance. Designed around the mantra that, if it's not there, it can't break. Of course, being air-cooled, it lacked a radiator, or a water thermostat, or radiator hoses, or a fan belt. The cooling fan was directly driven off the crankshaft. On the original models, the generator was also off the crank, and powered the fan. There was absolutely no accessories and nothing to break. But the concept of designing to eliminate problem-prone parts went further on than that. In the 1960s, the biggest failure of car engines was the head gasket. And it's still a problem today. So the 2CV engine solved this by eliminating the cylinder head gasket. On the 2CV, the cylinder barrels and heads were precision machined and lapped to fit with a gas tight seal without the need for gaskets. And you don't have distributor problems on the TCV. It didn't have one. It used something called wasted spark. The ignition simply sparked both cylinders when they were near top dead center on both the compression and the exhaust strokes. Again, if it's not there, it can't break. The same concept was used for its crankcase sections. Precision machining eliminated the need for gaskets. In some ways, this minimalistic concept was taken to absurd extremes. The Citroen 2CV windshield wipers would stop when you idled because they were directly connected to the same flexible shaft that drove the speedometer. It's a quirky car, but Citroen's concept of minimalization resulted in an engine that would run forever, everywhere from the Antarctica to the Sahara, with minimal attention on whatever fuel was available. This is a truly indestructible engine.